Welcome to the Dar and Tobago Tour News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited at the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. Finance Minister Larry Hawaii says that discussions with stakeholders are being held to ensure that in years to come, a balanced budget can be achieved. National Security Minister says the police service will be revamped and will once again gain the confidence of communities. And restamping Trinidad and Tobago's role in the Caribbean as we continue the discussion in our special report of Reconnecting the Diaspora. Thank you for joining us. The Honorable Minister of Finance, Senator Larry Hawaii, says the 2012-2013 budget will be a deficit budget. However, he adds that discussions with stakeholders are being held to ensure that in years to come, a balanced budget can be achieved. He made the announcement while addressing the media during consult consultations with the Labour Movement on the budget. One of the big things that I've been focusing on when I meet with the stakeholders uh, is a question of revenue generation. You know, how can we generate uh, more revenue to get us to the point where we can have a balanced budget at some time in the future? As I've said at other fora, I'm looking at ways in which I can also manage costs down and become more efficient so that the combination of efficiency, um, cost control, and revenue expansion will allow us to get to the goal of a sustainable level of expenditure for future years. Finance Minister Larry Hawaii met with members of the trade union sector as part of his ministry's consultations on the budget. Minister Hawaii said it was necessary to meet with the labor movement as they are important to the nation's development. The labor movement is a very important part of the development and transformation process as I see it. Uh, we will always have perhaps areas of disagreement, but we will always have areas of agreement because I'm sure um, both what we're looking to achieve and what the labor movement is seeking to achieve, uh, uh, you know, do dovetail many times. Um, we're all interested in seeing Trinidad and Tobago grow and develop. Uh, we're all interested in a brighter and better future for our children. So, so these are things that um, motivate all of us and therefore, uh, you know, it it behooves us to, to, to engage, continue to engage on an ongoing basis in, in a social dialogue process. The finance minister assures that the labor movement won't be the only stakeholder consulted. He adds that he intends to get the input of as many stakeholders as possible. What I've tried to do is to broaden the, <coughs> the consultative process to include a wide range uh, or as wide a range of stakeholders as possible so that we could get as much input um, as we can as we start to formulate the, the strategies and the initiatives that we will be implementing during the course of the next year. Um, this is a very, very important um, process and it's, it's absolutely important if we are to ensure that the budget is fully responsive to as many stakeholders as possible. <coughs> The consultative process with all stakeholders will end on July 31st. Gregory McBurney, News 4. Those who live by the gun are being asked to put it down or risk dying by it. A warning from the Honorable National Security Minister Jack Warner, who says the police service will be revamped and will once again gain the confidence of communities. He was speaking at the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, where he shared several proposed strategies which he plans to implement under his ministry to change the image of the police service. I was so damn proud. And what they were asking for to put the plan into effect? $1.3 million. Look at here, I said, done. Whether it's from my pocket or government, I couldn't care less. If they want, of their own volition, to change the image of the police service, and they need $1.3 million to do it, they have it. People don't report crimes anymore. They have lost faith in the police service. And they believe also to if they report crimes, there shall be reprisals against them of one kind or the other. So they don't report rape, robbery. Ask the people and, and find out. And because you have less reporting of crimes, you say crimes are done. Crimes are not done. And if, crime, if those crimes are done, I tell you, fear is up. You see? So the point, therefore, is that I held these meetings so as to, uh, so as to 
to, to find some collaborative way in which all of us can work together. Regaining the public's confidence in the police service. This is being placed on the front burner on the agenda of the Minister of National Security, who is dishing out possible measures to be implemented to create a more efficient police service. Mr. Warner says the millions of dollars being used to transport prisoners to court can be better utilized in actual crime fighting. He is also proposing to have police patrol the various communities with their window glasses down in a bid to make their presence felt even stronger. There is no reason to have 1,000 prisoners coming out every day to hear the cases postponed. Try them in the prison. Put a court there. Have video, survey, video conferencing that you can have this, of course, through the land. And in any event, if we do that, the $32 million a month we pay to transport prisoners put it to fight crime. What's wrong about that? What's wrong about that? Take off all the air conditioning from those cars. <laughs> Drive the cars with the glass down. Wave to people, how are you? How are the children and so on? How are the kids and so on? Do that. See? Do that. You know? Good afternoon. We are in the area. How are you? How are the kids? How was school today? We hear and so on. Talk to the people, right? But everybody had the glass up, air conditioned and so on. Air conditioned policemen in police vehicles. That finish. The various inputs on possible crime fighting strategies from previous national security ministers are being welcomed. Minister Warner says the crime plan is not a one man plan, but should incorporate the best strategies and ideas of those who may have contributed to crime fighting in Trinidad and Tobago in the past. He says that their experience can be used to put forward ideas and solutions to forge a way forward in taking crime down. I intend also to sit down. I, I propose to this point to my secretary to write Martin Joseph, write Brigadier Sandy, write Chinley, write my predecessors who were all ministers of national security to see if they too have an input in the plan. The plan is not a partisan plan, it's not a PNM plan, not a UNC plan, it's a plan for this country. Parents are also being asked to play their part in keeping track of their children. Minister Warner says this will go a long way in helping to address crime. He adds that every individual has a part to play in crime fighting. He says a collaborative effort from all members of society will put a huge dent on crime in this country. Police community support officers will also be on stream to assist in community policing. Police support officers. So every community now, we have its own police. Its own police who will guard the community, precepted and armed. And these police community officers will be accountable to the sergeant, whoever is the head of the police in the division. But they live in the area. They know the area. They know who coming and who going. And these People shall patrol the area and shall be arms of the police service. Vina Barath, News 4. News 4 continues after the break. Stay with us. It's like no other place on earth. Paria springs and rainforests that sing. And the blue seas and skies. But what makes Trinidad and Tobago really special is our people. Our fathers and mothers, sisters and brothers. We're aunts and uncles, neighbors and cousins. And we are officers of a new police service as well. A new service of the 21st century, the police service of tomorrow. It's different from the old model. And what it is really is a deployment model. So it's how we deploy our resources, how we utilize our resources for their maximum effectiveness. With new tools, new technology, new leadership, and a new sense of dedication and service to all our people. In the coming weeks, we'll air a series of half-hour specials to show you how we have been re-equipped with new computers, new communication systems, and new rapid response teams so we can respond with speed and precision.
Welcome back. The second of eight empowerment and training centers in Tobago has been opened. The centers aim to reduce poverty and encourage youth and community development through the merger of skills training and developmental programs. More in this report. Youth in Tobago need to realize the importance of farming so that the island may once again become the breadbasket of this twin island nation. So says minority leader in the Tobago House of Assembly, Ashworth Jack. Mr. Jack was speaking at the opening of the Plymouth Agro-Processing Center in Tobago. We recognize in the last couple of years that even as simple as thing as scythe, lettuce, is now imported. And setting this as an agro-processing center was intended to do a number of things. One, to keep the quality of the product at a certain level. And two, to keep prices at a certain level so that farmers will think it worth their while to get into farming. The intention here was to work with young people so that young people understand the value of one, producing your own food, and two, producing enough food to make Tobago self-sufficient. The center is part of the Bethel Empowerment and Skills Training Center, which is an initiative of the Minister of Tobago Development, Dr. The Honorable Delmon Baker. Addressing the crowd, Dr. Baker called for the center to be used as a place where youth can learn business skills. Let us all allow this space to be the space that young people will come in and feel free to interface with tutors, businessmen. And this is an agro-processing center where we convert the hard work of those who are in the agriculture field into a high-end product that can be sold on the shelves of Tobago, can be sold in Trinidad and can be exported internationally. That is the hope that we convert our energies and, and our efforts into something that can yield meaningful, sustainable financial rewards. Meanwhile, Chairman of the Best Training Center, Mrs. Florencia Leith, was excited about the opening of the center, which is the second of its kind on the island. However, she says if the program is to be sustainable, corporations and individuals must be willing to come forward and partner with the Ministry of Tobago Development. We are making an appeal to all corporate and the private sponsors to come forward and partner with us so that we can all continue to make positive contributions to the preservation of our people and development of our country. Gregory McBurney, News 4. In other news, Trinidad and Tobago's Miss World representative, Atalia Samuel, has paid a visit to the office of the Prime Minister. At the visit, the local Miss World crown was passed on from the previous representative, Leanne Forbes. Athalia Samuel is living every little girl's dream. The 25-year-old Laventil resident will represent her country at the upcoming Miss World competition, which will be held this year in China. Minister in the office of the Prime Minister, the Honorable Roger Samuel, has voiced this government's support for Athalia and says if she were to win, it would be an extra special achievement. Athalia, a former dancer with soca artist Destro Garcia, says despite the setbacks, she is overjoyed to be representing the country at such an event. Right now, I'm overjoyed about everything, even though a lot of things took, you know, time. Um, was beyond my, my control, but um, I'm overjoyed. I can't wait to, to see what Mongolia is like and to, to see the culture because I'm into art, anthropology and that is also part of what we call learning cultures, learning different things, learning people. And I've been doing that for many years, even when I danced back then with Astra Garcia and now I'm getting to do it on my own. Samuel showed her Miss World qualities when she skillfully answered a question always heard at the Miss World competition. What do you think sets you apart from the other, com the other competitors at this competition this year? What sets me apart that I'm from Virginia and it's easy. <laughs> um, yeah, being from Trinidad and Tobago, it's fabulous. And we are easy culture to represent. Yes, so we are hard because we are tough people. And, but besides that, um, Trinidad and Tobago, is, we are diverse in culture. We, we have a lot to talk about, and that, that sets us apart. Miss World 2012 will be held on August 18th in Mongolia, China. Gregory McBurney, News 4. More news after the break. Stay with us.
informing and educating the nation, especially the young ones about water, how it's won and processed, and how it should be protected, are just a few of our major responsibilities here at the Public Education Center. The enjoyable learning environment, cultivating conservation habits, developing healthy relationships, and giving our public an appreciation of the environment in which we produce water. WASA's PEC, the region's only public education center on water. Adults aren't the only ones who beat up on kids. Sometimes kids beat up on kids. Every child has the right to be protected from violence, abuse, and neglect. Because I shouldn't be afraid to go to school or play with my friends. Because no child should be hurt by adults or by other children. Because safety is my right. Stop the bullying. The Trinidad and Tobago Netball has continued to impress as the America's Federation of Netball Associations Championship goes into another day at the Jean Pierre Sports Complex. They faced what was supposed to be a stern test against neighbors Grenada, but came away with another stylist victory. Wayne Cunningham has the highlights. The captain and wing attack Candice Guerrero, Crystal Ann George, Jaleen Richardson, Anastasia Wilson. Onella Jack, Joe Lisa Cooper, Trisha Liverpool, and Kemfer Phillip. These are the women of the national netball team who faced Grenada last night as action continued in the AFNA Championship. Trinidad and Tobago got off to a fast start courtesy the dangerous Anastasia Wilson at goal shoot. and Joe Lisa Cooper at goal attack. By the end of the first period, the Calypso girls were comfortably ahead. The local team employed their crisp passing game and the opponents were unable to keep pace. TNT lost Cooper to a knee injury in the second period and that slowed the scoring a bit. Grenada found a little rhythm at that point. Goal attack Jeremiah hitting here for one of her 20 points from 28 attempts. They were scoring by any means necessary. Roberts hitting here. But going into the final period, they were still trailing big. Trinidad and Tobago once again led by Wilson in the shooting department. She had a sedate 48 from 53 attempts. Cooper scored an impressive 13 from 13 before she left the court and her replacement, Jaleen Richardson, had 13 from 15. Alicia Liverpool came in to relieve Wilson and she was perfect under the net with 4 from 4 as Trinidad and Tobago came away with an easy 77 to 29 win over Grenada. Up next, St. Lucia, Wayne Cunningham, News 4 Sports. When we come back on News 4 Special Report, stay with us. Carjacking has become very prevalent in recent times. Certain makes of vehicles are more preferred targets for criminals. When approaching intersections or junctions, ensure that all doors are locked 
and windows are wound up if possible. Remember, crime prevention is everyone's business. A message from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Welcome back. Ambassador to the United States, Mexico and the OAS, His Excellency Dr. Neil Parson, believes that Trinidad and Tobago needs to restamp its leadership role in the Caribbean. This as we continue our discussion in this special report, Reconnecting the Diaspora. Ambassador Trinidad and Tobago Nationals, do they understand the services offered by your office? And also, do they take advantage of the services offered by your office? Very much so. I will tell you on a daily basis, we have several hundred nationals going through our system from Florida, New York, the DMV area, in terms of accessing the services that we offer, passport renewals, MR MRPs, the machine readable passports, visa issuance. We often deal with um, the desolate citizens that we have out there through our missions. And um, you know, those who can't come to the office, we have a very well-structured program of outreach, an outreach program we go to them. We have gone to California at least three times a year, and on an average in California, we processed at least 75 passports per day, had 75 appointments literally, and many, many other outreaches that we do in other states for them to access the services. I will also tell you we have embarked on a fairly aggressive campaign via our websites. We are on Twitter, Facebook, we YouTube, all our presentations. I speak pretty often during the week at various events and those that we have recordings for we YouTube it so they get a feel for for the, the outreach programs and the efforts that we're making to engage them and surely when we, when we meet with them it almost snowballs because I find as we have events at the embassies and so on you're actually getting the, the attendance is increasing as we, as we progress. Ambassador, your thoughts about <coughs> Trinidad and Tobago making an impact, in fact not only an impact but a positive impact on the United States, Mexico, the OAS, and also wrapping up, um, where do you see your office, what are your, your aspirations and your goals to, to, to further make an even more positive impact? Trinidad and Tobago, let me say this, I, I think we need to restamp our leadership position and we are doing so, and we are doing so with distinction I must say. You know, very often one cannot sell by sitting behind a desk. Most of my time, most of, of most of our government officials' time in the re respective ministries, and they're doing it, go out there and sell our country. And my job has been made actually quite a bit easier because I, as you know, the Honorable Prime Minister and the Minister of Foreign Affairs and, and the Minister of Trade and Industry and several others, they have been beating the pavement. And it's almost a follow-up for me with, with those engagements. And um, I feel the impact we can make, we have been taking the lead in, in the OAS, for example, on issues of public security, citizen security, transnational organized crime. Those are some areas. As far as the United States is, is concerned, we are um, very important to the US and several other territories, Spain, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, China, for energy and energy security. Trinidad and Tobago is in a unique position where we, we have become net exporters of energy skill set. And without the intellectual capital to leverage the assets of energy in the ground, energy would not be able to be exploited. And we play, we are continuing to play those roles as we progress. And I think for the next 50 years, we have to position ourselves. The world has become almost regional blocks of power globally. And geopolitically, Trinidad and Tobago has positioned itself over time and continues to do so as a as, as a leader and a force in the Western Hemisphere, more notably the Caribbean region. I mean, we carry literally 14 to 15 votes in any multilateral setting. And I think we are doing what we need to do in terms of leveraging that opportunity in a global environment. And we need to continue doing so. And it's not just about sustaining the status quo. It's about building on it, improving it, and sustaining that growth over time. To, you know, really to propel us into who we ought to become as natural leaders as, as we are. Thank you very much for taking the time out to uh, give us more insight uh, as to your office 
and the rule and function. I have been speaking with His Excellency Dr. Neil Parson, Ambassador to the United States, Mexico, and of course to the OAS. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you so kindly. That's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 Report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Thank you for joining us.